Hey guys, uh, good, uh, what time is it? I'm not sure. I think it's still still in the AM. Not sure if it is or not. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. This is Coach Bill with Fat Loss Made Easy on this uh, nice, uh, cool Monday. And uh, today's topic is a topic that um, I see a lot of uh, questions on in these groups that I belong to especially the intermittent fasting groups and the um, uh, the over, now I think there are over 50 groups on adding lean muscle and incorporating the uh, good dietary fat low carb meals along with the intermittent fasting and longer fasting. But guys, this, this is a question that comes up a lot, is uh, the proper way to break a fast to add lean muscle. A lot of people are still uh, concerned that by fasting, doing either a 20-hour fast or a 24-hour fast or a 42-hour fast, it's going to cause you guys to lose lean muscle, especially for you seniors out there who are looking to actually add lean muscle. And the the science says, no, that's not going to happen if you're doing it right. That's the key, if you're doing it right. But the issue is that I'm seeing so far, not only with my own clients, but with other ones. And this is this is how and this is part of your education on how to properly uh, break a longer fast. Um, I'm not talking about a 16 or 18 hour fast. Mainly, I, honestly, guys, even if I do uh, on my non-fasting days, which today is, I normally don't have my first uh, meal until around 17 or 18 hours anyway. And um, part of this uh, information I'm going to give you today on how to break your fast, I always have a good source of lean protein um when i do break these fasts even these smaller fastings but this is more for those of you that are doing the 20-hour fastings the 24-hour fastings and maybe the 42-hour fastings and you're looking to actually um, escalate your muscle building hormones because when you hit 20s and 24s and 42s you're really amping up your muscle building hormones doing those But the mistake I'm seeing right now, guys, is a lot of people who are coming off these longer fastings, they're breaking their fast with carbohydrates. And that's actually going to cause an issue. It's going to actually throw you out of uh, fat burning and um, cause you to no longer be in fat adaptation and also could easily cause you to even add more fat to your body and you're here you're trying to lose it because you're doing intermittent fasting. And what do I mean by by that? Well, what I mean is that a lot of uh, health coaches aren't uh, explaining the importance of understanding certain hormones. Now, you guys already know, if you follow me, that hormones basically operate the whole body. You, you know that, I'm sure. If, if you don't, well, it does. The hormones not only operate the whole body, but certain hormones are going to control your fat loss or weight loss, whatever you want to call it. Certain hormones are going to actually activate or store fat. And you need to understand these hormones. That's why you need to fully uh, educate yourself on these different hormones and learn which hormones activate storing fat and how to eliminate that and then which hormones activate fat burning and increase those. You want to understand these. So we already know from all the research out there that too much carbs will actually, you know, too much carbs per sitting, especially those of you that are consuming more of the ultra processed carbs, you know, your store bought, your store bought carbs, box carbs, canned carbs, your uh, fast food carbs. 
most of you, you guys already know that there's an issue with insulin spike. Insulin is a hormone. Okay, insulin, what insulin does, it uh, helps to push uh, the carbohydrates you eat that are converted into sugar to push it into each cell. The problem is, is the American public here in the United States over consume ultra processed carbs and causes the insulin to be spiked all day because you guys are eating uh, ultra processed carbs throughout the whole day. So you're constantly spiking your insulin and insulin is known as your fat storing hormone. So there's one key factor. You gotta get insulin under control. Well, you also need to know that there's certain hormones that are actually going to activate fat burning, or there's certain hormones that are gonna actually uh, help release the uh, fat in your stored fat cells. So if you're looking to lose body weight, that's the key is to actually start using up your own stored body fat as fuel and not the carbohydrates that you're eating. And that's why uh, being on a non or a high good dietary fat, low carb meal plan and incorporating it with uh, intermittent fasting or these longer fasting that's exactly what you're doing. Because if you're fasting, guys, you're not eating any calories at all. A true faster is not eating any calories. I mean, why you guys call, those of you that, that are looking to do dirty fasting, why even waste your time to even fast? Do it right, because your body will eventually enjoy it. But when you're doing a true fast, you're not eating any calories at all for a certain amount of time. And what I mean is 18 hours, 20 hours, or 24 hours, the longer you go, the more of your own stored body fat that you're going to be burning. But you know what? There's a, there's a hormone that isn't talked about hardly at all. Um, I've actually only heard two people uh, talk about this or actually do a YouTube video on um, a hormone called um, glucagon. Uh, Thomas Delar, who does a lot of uh, science research, talks about it and also Dr. Jason Fong, who uh, specializes in reversing uh, type 2 diabetes, and he's now completely changed his um, health program to doing intermittent fasting and these higher dietary fat, low-carb meal plans to help reverse type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, and obesity. I've heard them talk about it. But this is a hormone that helps to release the fat, or we can call it food if you want, that are all that are sitting in your fat cells. But what happens is most of you are not activating the glu glucagon because you're eating too many carbs and you're spiking your insulin too high above uh, above level, above a good safe level. So you're not even getting you're not even getting into that fat release zone at all. So insulin and glucagon are complete polar opposite. Okay. Insulin, insulin spikes will, will store fat. So if you're consistently overeating or eating ultra processed carbohydrates throughout the whole day, your insulin is spiked all the time. And that's why most of you are gaining more weight around the middle hip or butt and why it's so hard to get off when you're trying to diet. And, and those of you that are 40, 50, 60 or 70 plus, why every year that middle keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Glucagon is what they call fat burning hormone. It helps to release the fat that are sitting in your fat cells. But the problem is when insulin spike is high, glucagon is tanked. Do you see the relationship here? They're the complete opposite. So, <clears throat> but what happens is, is that 
when you break a fast, and this is where breaking the fast actually uh, comes into play, why it's so important. So if, if glucagon is a fat releasing hormone, then think about this. If you're fasting, or even if you're uh, eating a high good dietary fat, low carb meal, you've heard me tell, say this all the time that <clears throat> you're in fat burning because you are, because you're burning, you're, you're eating very, very low carbs and you're depleting the carbs that you've eaten so fast that your body has now burning the fat as its primary fuel okay so if if you're eating a high good dietary fat low carb meal plan and your insulin levels are always low during those eating windows like you know either a six hour eating window or a, a four hour eating window or even a eight hour or even a, uh, if you're doing a, if you're doing an old man diet, one meal a day, then your insulin is super, super low, very low, but your glucagon is high because why? What does glucagon do? It releases fat from your stored fat to be used as energy because you no longer have glucose left in the body to be used as energy. Then you incorporate fasting. So you're doing a 20, a 20 hour fast or a 24 hour fast or a 36 hour fast. Then your insulin to, glu to glucagon ratio even gets better. Okay, now what do I mean by even gets better? Well, if you're fasting and you're not eating any calories at all, and you're just drinking your hydrogen rich water with your pink sea salt in it throughout the day, or you're having your black coffee with no flavor in it throughout the day, or you're having tea, green tea throughout the day, unsweetened, then you're not eating any calories, right? Right? You're not eating any carbs, right? So how's the body going to survive without food? Well, it's because you have plenty of food sitting in those fat cells. You understand? So the body is going to go after the fat in your fat cells and glucagon is going to be the activator to help that happen. You see the relationship between insulin and glu glucagon? Now, insulin isn't always bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I talk bad about insulin all the time because most people are uh, overeating carbs and causing insulin to be bad. But you've got to have insulin in order to get what healthy glucose you do have to have into those cells to operate throughout the day as well. See, when you become fat adapted, guys, you're not only burning glucose, but you're also burning your own stored fat. So you're double dipping in your energy. That's what's so cool about the programs that we offer on our online personal coaching because we teach you all this stuff. So by keeping your insulin low, you are not kicking yourself out of fat adaptation, but for at least, so by, by eating, so by breaking your fast, how this works, by breaking your fast with a lean piece of good meat, or a, or a good source of protein, you are still keeping your insulin low. Now, any foods you eat, guys, don't misunderstand me here. You got to understand this. Any food you eat is going to raise your insulin to a certain level. Now, you've heard of the glycemic index, right? Certain foods raise insulin too high. Certain foods raise insulin low. That's exactly how it works. So insulin is actually uh, activated when you start eating food. No matter, it doesn't matter what food it is, protein, uh, fats. Fats also cause your insulin levels to ex uh, elevate a little, very little. So if you look at it at a graph, if you look at carbohydrates, carbohydrate, ultra processed carbohydrates escalates insulin high, super high. Proteins, 
a good source of protein, lean meat, will escalate insulin lower or a little. If you eat just fat, your insulin level goes up very, very little, sometimes can't even be marked. Okay, so the object here is why not go ahead, you've been on a fast for 20 hours or 24 hours or 20, however, and so when you're getting ready to break your, say you get your uh, uh, ready, I like doing the 20 hour fast on my fasting days uh, because that seems, that works for us very, very well because we're older seniors and we're trying to add lean muscles. So I want to make sure I bring in enough calories, enough protein per day and 20 hours seems to be the ticket for it. Uh, for most of us, even for, uh, even science is saying most people can do a 20 hour fast every other day. But I'm going to break my fast at, say, 2 o'clock, and I'm going to break it with a good source of uh, pasture-raised, grass-finished, say, a piece of chicken, uh, four ounces. And what's that going to do to my insulin level? It's only going to raise it up a little bit. So that means that if I have my main meal an hour later, I'm going to still be in fat burning for at least an hour longer, but the key is by only raising my insulin up just a little because of the protein, my glucagon is accelerated up even higher after I eat the protein. So I fasted for 20 hours, so my glucagon is already up. I'm using the fat out of my fat cells as energy because there's no more carbohydrates or no more glucose left. Then I'm going to have a piece of meat and break my fast with a piece of meat that's even going to drive my glucagon even higher. But see, this is where insulin comes into play and it's a good thing. This is where insulin is the good guy because you need insulin to get the nutrients into your where? In your cells. So, by your insulin spiking up a little bit, when you have your protein, you are getting those muscle building blocks that are in protein into your body or into your cells to do what? To add lean muscle, okay? Then when you do have your main meal, you still have a good dietary fat, moderate protein, low carb meal and you're going to keep that glucagon still high and the insulin low. That is the success. That's why people like us are still able to add lean muscle mass even at our age and are still able to drop our body fat down to a very, very healthy um, percentage. And when I both aren't, the, aren't your average Se uh, seniors because of where our body fats are, okay? So guys, I hope you saw some value in this. Now, I did do a blog post on this with, with that is much more specific, and it will be in my uh, new um, website once it's launched, and I'm hoping it's going to get launched this week. And uh, in the website, there'll be a tab on blog post where you can hit it, and uh, the proper way to break your fast will actually be um, uh, in that uh, section of the website. Also, you guys can go to my Fat Loss Made Easy um, Facebook group page. I will put the uh, blog in that group for the members to um, also view. All you got to do is go to the downloads and download it, and you will get the exact same thing. Okay? So guys, uh, if you like some more information about how to add lean muscle as a senior and burn body fat at the same time, then you can message me at bill at billmabrycoaching.com. I'd be glad to help you. Guys, have a great day, and we'll see you guys at the next video.